Yes, 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 yes. We want to say a big thank you to God Almighty for making this possible. Uh, I want to say thank you to every one of you that is watching. This is Evangelist Emmanuel Emeka Okeke. And uh, I want to say a big thank you to every single one of you out there that is watching, that is tuned in right now, that is watching this video right now, that uh, God is going to bless you as you watch this video. God is going to impact on you as you watch this video. God is going to answer your prayers as you watch this video. God is going to liberate you as you watch this video. God is going to take you from one level, the level where you are right now, to another better level. I mean better level. I say better level. I'm talking about better level. When I mean better, I mean really, really, really better. God is going to um, take you to the next phase of life that you need to be. If there is any of your blessing that is being delayed, Right now, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, let up whatever that is holding our blessing, lose his hold in the name of Jesus, let your blessing come to you. Once again, good day to every one of you, it's Evangelist Emmanuel Emeka, okay, okay. Um, today, uh, um, we're we'll talking about something I, I know that I believe is of, of great importance to every one of you that is watching right now. Before you watch this, I want you to first of all share it, trust me. You want to share this video. I know you want to watch it to the end before you share this video, but I trust me when I say share this video first. It's important. Share this video and make sure every of your friend watches this video. It's very, very important. You see, today, um, I want to say a big thank you to the partners, to the support, people that are partnering with us and supporting with us in this ministry and helping us to touch many lives as much as possible. I am grateful. Thank you very, very much. Uh, I was people, they say, uh, I want to share a, a testimony of someone before. I start this. Um, there's a lady that um, she had, I think she called from the, I think it's UK. I know about it's plus four. Probably that should be UK. So she, I think she went to the doctors and told her that there's something wrong with her belly. That she's pregnant. There's something wrong with the child. That there's no way she's going to deliver. That um, it has to be true operation for her to deliver. She called me on the phone. I told her it's not possible. That that's not God's plan. That's not God's plan. We prayed on the phone and I told her that nothing will happen to the child. Nothing will happen to the child. In fact, I told her I canceled the doctor's report. The next day she went and the doctor said this is impossible that she need that the baby's okay, everything is fine. God resected everything. God took what God removed what was not supposed to be there out and put what was supposed to be there and God turned the baby around and everything was to the glory of God. So I want to think sometimes there's nothing God cannot do. Believe that. But now today I'll be talking about is it your will or the will of God? I'm gonna be talking about why you should let God's will work for you now let me tell you something we 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 always end up wanting our own will to work for us uh, father i need a good house i need a big mansion i need cars i need different kind of things but you forget to understand that you're supposed to pray according to god's will you have to pray according to god's will you see let me tell you as much as you want to pray according to your own will that there are thousands of reasons why you should allow god to, to god's will to god to let his own will done for you first of all he is god Second, he sees the future. Thirdly, he knows the past. Fourthly, he's God of good. Fifthly, he's a creator. Sixthly, he sixthly, uh, yeah, I can use the word sixthly. Sixthly, <laughs> yeah, sixthly. Um, he's um, he's your creator. He knows what you actually need. Seven, he owns you. God owns you. Every single thing you're doing, God owns you. But just that he gave, he, gave, he gave us this free will for us to live the kind of life we want to live. He gave us this certain free will for us to do whatever we want to do. And uh, because, <coughs> because he's too merciful. Yeah, God is too merciful. He's just too merciful. I mean, <coughs> I, I, I mean, I get to know it based on my own lifestyle, you know, what I used to when I was living in the world. Yeah, when you come, when you get closer to understanding God right now, the way I'm understanding God, I don't know Him fully well, but I'm, I'm beginning to understand Him, I'm beginning to decipher certain code, I'm beginning to understand Him, and I find that I was actually living in, in so much grace in the past, when I was living in the world. I was living in so much grace that I never actually knew, I never actually gave thanks to it enough. I was living in so much grace, and now that I'm beginning to understand, I find that I'm beginning to understand how merciful God is. And how powerful God is, and how much of a, a wonderful God He is, and how much of a of a good plan He has for us. Now let me go straight to this. Now there's one thing the Bible say: you keep praying, God, I want, I want you to give me a car, and God is saying, no, you don't need a car. You are saying, I want, not I need. You are saying, I want, I want to drive a Venza. God is saying, no, you don't need to drive a Venza. I want to drive the latest Range Rover 2018. God is saying, no. 
drive a Camry of 2008. Drive a Camry of 2010. You're saying, no, 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 this guy is outdated. No. You have to be able to separate your want from your need. God will provide all your need. All your need. Your need is most important. God can provide your wants. Yes, He can. But keep in mind that maybe those ones that you're asking for may actually separate your relationship, may actually separate you from Him. And God doesn't want to lose you. It's like, for example, a child, they give birth to you, you wake up one morning and you say, Daddy, uh, maybe on your, at the age, maybe you have a son, at the age of 10, your son says, Daddy, I want a car. You'd be like, Excuse me. No, like you don't have the money, probably have the money to afford the car. But you know, it's not yet time for him to have the car. Because if he has a car at the age of 10, what then will you give him at the age of 20? If he, have, if he drives to one of the best cars, a car worth 50 million naira or a car worth 50 million dollars at the age of 10, do you think you can contell with him when he's 20, when he's 15? No. But God is God. He knows that you having that kind of thing at that very moment will ruin you. It will not just ruin you into the saying, it will ruin, ruin you for him. That's mean that when he gives you all those money, you might end up forgetting him. You might be telling yourself, yeah, no, 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 you God give me $10 million, there is no way to forget how Cyprus is. Let me tell you, money intoxicates. Money has a spirit. That is why the Bible says that you can't serve money and serve God. But he didn't say Satan. He didn't say evil. He didn't say devil. He said you can't. God doesn't put himself in the same level with devil. Devil is an angel, fallen angel, has no power. God is God. He created even the angels. You understand? So he doesn't ever compare himself with him. I mean, if you read the book of Revelation, who fought with um, um, the Satan was not God. It was Angel Michael. He defeated him. God doesn't have that power to waste. He doesn't have that energy, that time, that strength to waste any of his power. No, no, no. That's why he said money. Because he knows that money is the root of all evil. Money is not evil. Money is the root of all evil. That means that money can bring forth evil into your life. Money can destroy the relationship you're having with God. Money can disconnect the love God has for you. God's love is abundant and forever lasting. But when you deviate from God, then His love seems like, you feel like His love is being disconnected from you. But the love is constant. But you will feel that the love is being disconnected from you. So now I'm talking about the will of God. Now, if God is to plan for you, why should God plan for you? First of all, God said that if you, who is wicked, that means you read the book of Matthew 7 11, he said, if you, your earthly father, who is wicked, who is evil, who is greedy, who is stingy, knows how to give good gifts. In first of all, he started by saying, Who among you will your son ask for serpent? For with uh, who among you will your son ask for bread? will give him a stone. Ask for fish, will give him a snake, a serpent. No, nobody does that. If you are a father, there is no way your son will say, Daddy, I want bread, you give the, your son stone. Daddy, I want fish, you give him a snake. It doesn't work like that. You might be maltreating people in your office, people in your in your house, in your, your neighbor. You might say you don't have money. Someone can ask you, please, uh, I want to eat a plate of rice. You have to say you don't have money. But when your son says, Daddy, I want to eat a plate of rice, you have that money. So if you that you are wicked, that you only know about your own son, is willing to give your son good gifts, if you know how to give good gifts, if you know that your son needs to go to school, if you know that your son needs to eat food, if you know that your son needs to take his medication to be, to be alright, how much more God, who is the creator of the good things, the maker of all good things, how much more God, who is holy, who is righteous, who is just, who is the one that provided for your wicked father to even give you food? How much more him to give to you? So if your father, you say, give me bread, gives you bread. What do you think if, if you ask God? What makes you think that if you ask God for bread, he won't give you bread? He will always, you see, he said in the book of, um, in the book of Isaiah 55, 8 to 9, I read. He said, my thoughts are not like your thoughts, says the Lord. My thoughts are not like your thoughts. See, the way we think is not the same way God thinks. The way we think is the way God thinks. God thinks far beyond us. He said, my thoughts, that's in verse 3. Isaiah 55, 8 to 9. In verse 8, he said, my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts. Says the Lord, nothing, not li nothing like your thoughts. That is way different. And my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. Now, you know what it calls for something to imagine? I can imagine, as I'm here now, I can imagine 
I can imagine 100 million being here. Dollars. I can imagine 500 million dollars being here. I can imagine 350 cars worth 100 million dollars packed outside. But God is right there. He's telling you that my ways are far beyond you. Are far beyond anything you could imagine. For that means you can never imagine the ways of God. You can't. Your brain is too small to calculate, to understand, to estimate, to probably. Oh my God. There is, there is no probability. There is no enough percentage. There is no enough understanding for you to understand the way of God. The Bible is only a way for you to live right and understand the littlest way of God. But it is not enough to qualify you to understand Him because your imagination, your thoughts can never comprehend God. If our imagination can comprehend God, then we can be able to predict what God will do. And we can be able to predict when the world will come to an end. And then all of us will repent before the world comes to an end. But like you say, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. Then in verse 9 he said, For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, do you know the distance between the heaven and the earth? Heaven, I'm not saying the sky. Heaven and the earth, that is above the sky. The distance. When the plane are flying, they're not flying in heaven, they're flying on the skies. The planes are not flying on heaven or in the heaven, they're flying in the skies. Now, when a plane that is so big is on the ground, you find that it can accumulate over 100 people or so. But when it's on the sky, you feel like you can just catch it with your hand. Now, calculate the distance from here to the sky. I don't know how to tell you. The distance from here to the sky. Do you know, okay, now look at your eyes from here to the sky. Do you know how far it is? Now look at what God said. He said, uh, okay, now look at what he said. He said, for just as heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways are higher than the, your ways. So are my ways higher. The ways of God is way beyond. Now, if your thinking is from your toe to your head, now imagine from your toe, the ground, to the sky. That is how far his ways is. For just as the heaven, just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. That means you can never imagine. So now, if God, who is the giver of all good things, who is the doer of all good things, who is the maker of all good things, things beyond your imagination, that's me when you ask something he knows what is right to give you because let me tell you he knows that if he gives you this car in the next five years this is what will happen to you so he gives you this car so that in the next five years you will be better in a good relationship with him because his main aim is for you to make heaven his main aim is not for you to get the whole world and lose your soul that is why he said what shall it profit a man to get the whole world but loses his soul i want you to understand this that if god plans for you if God plans for you, he plans for the best thing. I don't know how to bring this to your understanding. But if God plans for you, if God is the one planning for you. See, he said, cast all your cares upon him for he cares for you. That if he be for you, the work can be against you. Now, when you cast all your cares upon Christ, God plan for me. I don't want any other thing. Just plan. Everything just plan for me. I'm tired. Just, I just want to be on my own. Just Everything I go to work, come back, read my Bible, do my fellowship, pay my tithe, give some offerings, give to the beggar, give to my neighbors, smile with people, love one another, pray to you, thank you for everything. God provides for every single thing. So let me tell you, if your father knows that you're supposed to be in school, don't you know that God himself knows that you are supposed to be in school? And that same God is the one that provided for your father to give to you. And that same God, now how much more when you speak to him directly and say, Father, I need this. I need, not I want this. Know your need. What do you need? First of all, you need a house where you can sleep. God will provide. What's the second thing you need? You need to go to school. God will provide. You need a good job. God will provide. You need a car. One car is enough. God will provide. If the car is spoiled, God will provide for the money to repair the car. Trust God to provide. He knows what you need. Let me tell you this thing. Let me put it in this scenario. I don't want this video to be long, but it's already getting long, but thank you, Jesus. It is important we understand this. Now, I'm not trying to go to different verses in the Bible. I'm trying to just stick with these verses. If his thoughts 
is beyond our imagination. Now, the reason why you have a father is because your father has more experience than you. The reason why you have parents is because they have more experience than you. And through their experience, that's why God said, Obey your mom and your dad that your days may be long because they have experience. They will tell you, your father will tell you, This is fire. Do not touch it. If you touch it, it will burn you. Based on his experience, right? Now, because you are so stubborn, you touch the fire, it burns you. Oh, finally, my father was right. How much more God, who is the one that created the fire and created the knowledge and created your father as well? The knowledge of God is beyond your understanding. And that is the one reason why you should allow him to think and plan for you. Let me tell you, you can never go hungry if you serve God. If you read the book of Isaiah 55, you will understand what God requires of you. I will be teaching it in the next video. I will be reading and explaining it in the next video. That one might be 20 minutes, but it will be worth your time. I want you to understand this. We need to understand that we, God, okay, now, how important is that even Jesus Christ, who is a God, said to his father, he said, Father, if it is possible, let this cross pass me by, but it is not my will, but thy will be done. Jesus, who is God, even submitted to his own father's will. Karabosharabonda. Jesus, who is the God, the Son of God, God Himself. God in flesh came down and prayed this prayer. If Jesus Christ wanted His Father's will to be on His life, who are you? Who are you? Jesus, who is the God? Jesus Christ, who is the God? Say, if it is possible, if it is possible, it is possible for him. But Jesus always surrendered humility to his Father. He said, if it is possible for this cross to pass me by. If it is possible. But he said, it is not my will. That means his will can be done. That means your will, God can grant you your will. But God knows that your will will not favor you. Had it been God granted Jesus Christ the will, then we will still perish. We will perish and the name of Jesus Christ will not be the strongest name in the world. Yes. But he said, it is not my will, but thy will be done. So, and as God's will was done, Jesus Christ name became the most powerful on earth and in heaven and beneath the earth. You see God's plans. His plan is for you to be greater than your imagination. If he his imagination is beyond your own imagination. Then believe me that his thoughts is beyond your own imagination. His plans for you is beyond your imagination. His will for you is beyond your own imagination. But you believe to yourself because you think you have a right. You have 50 million now in your account. You have a right. You are so happy. God is saying that I, there is more that would have happened if you have allowed me to plan for you. God is saying that you will not just have, you will be wealthy on earth. You will also be wealthy in heaven. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world? But lose his soul. What does it profit you to become the president of the whole world with all the money, with all the powers, and at the end you're born in the lake of hell? Why your servants then, the least of your servants, will be in heaven rejoicing? Let us learn. Let us learn. Let God plan your will. Let God plan for you. And how do God plan for us? Father, you know my need. I need a good job. But do not give me a job that will take me away from you give me a job that will give me joy happiness satisfaction and still provide for all my daily needs father i need a car i don't have a car i need to be able to transport myself to church and also help members of the church who doesn't have a car that live nearby me so i could also drop them i'll use that car to glorify your name and I will, it will also give me joy to give testimony that you have blessed me with a car Father, I need a wife, a good wife, that will not deviate me from your presence, but bring me even closer to your presence, that I will grow to love, cherish, and appreciate, and together we will raise children that will glorify your name, Lord. Help me, Lord. Father, look at my children. Please bless them. Bless them that they might be a blessing to you, and your name and your name alone will be glorified. 
In the name of Jesus, what more do you want? What more do you want? Do you see this prayer? This is as sweet as possible. It's a very sweet prayer. Father, as I am going through the O Lord, guide me. Let people that matters locate me. But let people that will ruin me not locate me. Now, you are praying for what you want. You want people that matters to locate you. But you don't want people that will ruin you to locate you. Now, you are praying according to God's prayer. Lord, I want this job in the bank. I want it. It's a high paying job. I want it. But Father, you know better than I do. If this job will not will prevent me from glorifying your name or bring trouble and calamity to me, then Father, I don't want it. Give me the job that will glorify your name. Now, you might get that job in the bank, but if it's not God's will, you get the job, you will suffer. One day they wake up and tell you that 50 million is missing and you go to jail for it. You might stay five years, but it's what you prayed for. Because you wanted your will and God granted your will. Then you see it and you're suffering for it. But when God plan, God will always plan. When God plan, Father, now, when you are in danger, you pray for God to give you a job and God give you a job. And you're still glorifying him and now you're in danger. Now hear your prayer. Father, I ask for a job. You give me this job. This job is a lovely job. It enables me to serve and to glorify your name. Now, Lord, I am having issue in the office. Money is missing and I was accused and you know I was not the one. Father, do not let me be ashamed, be put to shame. For you say you are a God, and I shall reap where we have sowed, for you cannot be mocked. Now help me, O oh Lord. Let me not just go out with shame. Let me not go out with shame and let people bring shame to your name. That look at him, he serves God, and yet he steals. Father, clear my name. And if you want me to leave that office, make a way for me, and I will leave. Just for your name to be glorified. This is a, these are powerful prayers. These are magnificent prayers. Now, when you see the prayers, it is balanced. It is your will and God's will. You are reasoning with God and God will intervene. God cannot tell you to go why he has not gone ahead of you. If you read the book of, if you read Isaiah 59, you understand better. God cannot tell you to go when he has not gone ahead of you. I will be teaching that after the video of um, Isaiah 55. I will be teaching that Isaiah 59. It is well. I pray for you that God Almighty grant you a good heart desire. May God teach you to understand His will. May God teach you to know His will. May God elaborate and explain Himself to you in the way that you will understand. May God give you enough reasons to understand that His wills are better, His ways are better, and His thoughts are mightier than we can ever imagine. And may God do for you what you cannot do for yourself. If you are sick, I want you to understand that the one way to receive divine wealth, divine um, healing, is for you to give your life to Christ. It is often important for you to give your life to Christ. When you give your life to Christ, you stop sinning and God takes full control over you. The reason why sin prevents you, the reason what prevents God light from shining our things, what prevents God light from shining upon your life is that God is raining down blessing, but your sins are preventing it. Your sins are like umbrella. As the blessing of God is raining down, your sins are preventing it from touching you. And that is why you're not receiving. But the day you confess your sin, he said, I am ready. If only you open your mouth and confess your sins, I am ready and just to forgive your sins. Once you confess your sins, God forgives you. That umbrella that is preventing the rain of God, the blessing of God from falling on you, will be removed. And instantly the rain of God falls on you. Because every single day, God is raining down rains of blessings. He said, give us this day our daily bread. I mean every single day there is a daily bread. Every single day there is a revelation. Every single day there is a blessing because every morning his blessing and his mercy is renewed. And that means that every single day has a powerful blessing on his way. So right now because you believe and you have confessed your sins to God. Repent now. Just take some time. Just pray. You can pause this video and pray. And when you are done praying you join us again. Now I pray for you as you have confessed your sins to God. I decree upon your life let the blessings of God begin to manifest in your life. Let the blessings of God begin to manifest in your life. Whatever that is holding the blessing of God upon your life, this very moment, I command the angels that walk with me to remove those things and let your blessing reach you. Count from now to seven days. A lot of things will begin to transform in your life. The spirit of anger will leave you. I command spirit of anger to leave you. I command spirit of frustration to leave you. I break the yoke of masturbation in your life. I break the yoke of sexual immorality in your life. I deliver you from the hand of the evil ones. And I ask that the Holy Spirit come inside of you and recite inside of you and dwell in you and possess you with his power in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Miki kiri panta rabu uzere vashanda rebende. Madunga bunda riba ripra munda gabu sharavande. Ripra nege bunda. I pray for financial breakthrough upon your life. Whatever that is holding your karabu sharavanda rebende rebunda. I break the curses. Please, someone should go and watch my video on curses. There is somebody here, that you've been praying and fasting, nothing is happening. Watch my video on curses. He's a man, a man, a young man. You've been praying, fasting, nothing is happening. There is a cause, it's a cause, there is a cause that is causing it. Watch my video on, on breaking causes. I think I made a video about causes. Go to YouTube or go to this particular page you're watching right now. Check my video on breaking causes. Um, so I wrote, it says something about causes. Then that, in that video, you find out how you, you can break the causes upon your life. Once you break those causes, then now the prayers all, your prayers are answered all in heaven, but the causes are preventing it. Hmm? Yeah. Yes, yeah, possible causes can prevent you from receiving your blessings. Yes. So once that thing removes, sometimes we you can get causes by fornication, you can get causes by masturbation, you can get causes by disobedience to your mom, your dad, you can get causes by gossiping about men of God, you can get causes by uh, not paying your tithes. Yes. You can get causes by uh, from your generational from your family without even knowing. You can get causes from the things your father did, the things your mother did. You can get causes from um, incest. You can get causes by sleeping with um, your own cousins. You can get causes by, you can get um, a cause by that. You can get causes by, um, by God help me, by, um, do, 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 do. if there's an idol worshiping in your family, if there's someone that worship idol in your family, you can get causes by that. And uh, that is a, that is pretty much a whole lot of where you can get causes from. So, uh, but Jesus Christ, one of the good things that Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary, Calvary and he became a cause in order to break your causes. So, it is well. So, watch the video and the causes in your life will be broken in the name of Jesus. I break whatever cause in your life in the name of Jesus. See, it's not a must I have to scream and shout for you to know that it has been broken. Believe it is done in the name of Jesus. I am not the one that does it. It is Jesus Christ that heals. I am only a messenger, I'm only a friend, I'm only a son of God. And I speak as my father would want me to speak. Whatever I see my father do is what I do. For the grace of the Lord, for the spirit of the Lord, for the power of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to preach the gospel. And now I've preached the gospel. And you that listen to this gospel, may God bless you. May God increase you. May God uplift you. May God do for you what you cannot do for yourself. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, bless you. Bless you, bless you. Every single one of you that have been a partner to us, I pray that God blesses you because I pray for you guys every single day. And I pray for every one of you that are my friends on uh, on Facebook, on Instagram, on uh, YouTube as well, on my Snapchat as well. I pray for every one of you, even people following me on Twitter. I pray for every one of you every single day. My partners and supporters, as you do, most of them are testifying. As you support and partner with us, your pocket never dries. I'm not saying it will never dry. I say it never dries. It can never dry. It can never dry. There is no way you can support the work of God and you will lack. It is not possible. That is not the kind of God I serve. I serve a God that gives up. My God is a wealthy God. Wealthy God. The God of Abraham. The God of Isaac. The God of Jacob. The God of Emeka, Emmanuel, Keke, Evangelist. I bless you in the name of Jesus. May God do for you what you cannot do for yourself. If you are sick, you are healed in the name of Jesus. I don't care what sickness is that. I don't need to call them of your sickness. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. I have the power. God has given me the power to cast out all demons and to heal all diseases. So wherever you are, be it HIV, be it cancer, be it malaria, be it typhoid fever, be whatever it is, I don't care. Call the name and as you have called the name, I command it to leave you now in the name of Jesus. Everything is spiritual. Everything happens spiritual. Sickness is not a plan from God. It's not from God. No, no, no. It is not from God. Healing is from God. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. As I've said, it so shall it be in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. It remains evangelist Emmanuel. Let me cook you. May God bless you.